It's finally time to cover another maple on Tree Talk. Today we are talking about the most widespread and abundant one, in eastern forests anyway, uh, red maple. So red maple stretches from Florida all the way up into Canada. Um, it is uh, across almost every state in the east of the United States. Um, and uh, part of the reason it is is because it is very, very tough, very broadly tolerant, very prolific at seeding, and very hard to kill. So let's get into it. First, we'll start with the leaf. Um, most people know red maple from the leaf. Uh, it is pretty easy to identify. Um, if you need a little trick to, uh, relative to the other maples, red maple is easy because R, E, D. It typically has these three very well-defined lobes. Um, uh, some people say it kind of looks like a cat face in profile. Uh, to me, it just, it's a very red maple leaf. It looks very different than our sugar maple, which has the bigger, blockier lobes. Um, it also, it has these serrations on the lobes, so red maple. In the autumn, it has a beautiful red foliage, um, and at other parts of the year, a lot of stuff is red too. Um, the flowers are red in the spring. Uh, they're typically some of the first flowers I see. Red maple and sugar maple are usually kind of going toe for toe for some of the earliest uh, flowers I see. Um, and in the spring, uh, they will develop samaras that are kind of a pinkish red color um, that uh, are a little bit distinctive. So I found some samples on the forest floor. So these ones aren't great because they've already been sitting on the forest floor for a little while, but you can see how small they are. Um, and they are held in twos, just like our, our other uh, maples, uh, but these ones are very small. Um, and uh, yeah, they look different. Um, and we can compare that to some of our other maples that'll fall a little bit later. Uh, so box elder, for instance, which will hold its samaras um, into the winter, um, but these will drop in usually April or so, uh, pretty early in the spring. Um, Let's also look at the bark. Uh, so back when we did the sugar maple tree talk, um, we looked at this trick for identifying the bark. Um, the bark of a red maple is tricky. It can be very frustrating because it looks different on every single individual tree. We'll have two red maples standing right next to each other uh, that are roughly the same size and they'll look different. Um, at maturity, uh, you know, close to the ground, um, we get these cracks, these, these vertical strips of bark that are distinct. Uh, the trick that I want to show you that is a good way to tell the difference between red and sugar maple is you just barely push on the lip of those, uh, oops, well, <laughs> it's usually not that dramatic, but you, you push on the, the edge of those ridges and they'll snap in like that. Whereas sugar maple uh, is very hard, it won't do that, um, even if you really, really push. Um, but to me, what, how I, when I was first learning my tree identification, the way I knew it was a red maple by the bark was because it's very, very smooth at the top and then it's crazy at the bottom. So it has these crazy vertical strips. Um, hopefully we will find some other red maples to look at uh, for some good b-roll to put in here. Um, uh, so uh, let's get into the ecology of this tree. Um, I mentioned how very widespread it is. Um, I see it sometimes growing in stuff that is so wet um, that I am just totally shocked that any, any tree at all is surviving. Um, it'll, uh, and it's called swamp maple, uh, partially for that reason. It can also be found way up high on dry rocky ridges. Again, very, very hard to kill and very prolific. It'll also stump sprout very readily. So were we to come in here and cut this tree down, if there was enough light, uh, well, it would stump sprout. And then if there was enough light, it would turn into a bunch of, uh, well, stump sprouted um, stems. Um, part of the reason why it is maligned in, in the forestry field is because uh, it is so prolific, it is so tough, it is so hard to kill, but it doesn't have excellent timber properties. Um, often that is due to form rather than um, timber quality. It can be pretty good timber, although it's not as broadly useful um, as even, you know, sugar maple, as hard maple is. Another uh, name for red maple is soft maple. Um, but the form is often a little crazy. We can see this one here um, has multiple major stems. They're branching off a ton. And part of that is because it is just hungry for light, maybe thirsty for light, whichever uh, you decide. They don't live very long. They're one of those pioneer species. So they're, they're here for a good time, not a long time. Um, at maturity, they're trying to soak up light so they can turn all that solar energy into more seeds to send out. When the seeds do land on the ground, they're not incredibly picky about where they're germinating. They have very high germination rates and they can germinate in full shape. Even in this hemlock forest, I don't see any right now, but I was seeing a couple uh, red maples earlier. Um, now, 
they won't last forever in the shade, but because red maple puts out so much volume of seeds every single year, they have a nice reservoir at all times underneath the red maple in the, in the forest floor, there's gonna be some little seedlings. And so when we get a disturbance event, um, like a fire moving through, uh, or a storm blowing over a lot of trees, or one tree will die, um, we have that reservoir of either new seeds landing on the forest floor or seedlings already there to then capitalize on that opportunity, suck up a bunch of light, and then start putting shade out itself. So if you are a forester who is looking for more oak production out of your forest, that's maybe a problem because you want that light to go to oaks, not to maple, which is a lot less valuable uh, for timber. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not a great tree. Um, they are uh, really providing a lot of function. A lot of wildlife do use eat, eat those seeds. Um, excellent habitat species, really good cover. Deer seem to love eating the foliage, though it doesn't really slow uh, our red maple down. Um, and so uh, there you have it. A wonderful tree, red maple. Really excellent landscaping tree, uh, partly because of that autumn foliage and because of how tough it is. Um, but I wouldn't recommend planting it very close to any structures um, because it has very shallow roots, notoriously so. Uh, shallow roots and really heavy storms, the whole thing can tip over pretty easily. Because again, they're here for a good time, uh, not a long time. So excellent uh, landscaping species, shade species, but maybe a little bit further away from the house.